let's introduce the concept of the partition function, right? We had this Boltzmann distribution here, e to the alpha times e to the beta, beta epsilon j, the energy of that state. And that Boltzmann factor, right, that's, that was just uh, you know, energy and temperature related, right? This is an exponentially decreasing term as the energy increases, right? Inversely related to the temperature. The total number of particles is just you sum all of the populations. We know what the population is in an equilibrium distribution, right? It's given by this Boltzmann distribution. So we can substitute that in here. Oh, e to the alpha, that's a constant. It doesn't change with j. So we can pull it out of the, the summation. And oh, this term here, we're going to see that a lot. We're going to give it a name. And that indeed is the partition function z. That summation over j of the Boltzmann factors e to the beta epsilon of j, the energy of the state j, right? Okay, now the partition function tells us how the population is partitioned into the various levels of the system, right? According to the, the Boltzmann factors for those, right? And so we can solve for ea, that's just the total number, right? Total number of particles n, uh, solve for that oh, n divided by the, the partition function. The population of a state is just the total number of particles times the Boltzmann factor divided by the partition function. And this partition function, it turns out, is related to a lot of thermodynamic properties. Do you have to memorize all of these? No, you do not have to memorize all of these. That's not the point of this. The point is to show that it's there. Now, what you should know is, okay, get this idea total number of microstates, that's really important because the total number of microstates is related directly to the entropy. Okay, that's a good one to know right there. That's really important, right? And the total energy of the system is just population times the energy of each one of those states. You gotta sum it up over all the states that are occupied. How we get to total energy, right? Just sum up the total energy of all of the particles in the system. Right, that's really important. And then there are some other functions that are going to be really important. That Gibbs energy, obviously, is really important. And um, just know that there are ways that we can then relate these functions together, and that actually at the root of many of these will be this partition function, which is related to the energy level structure. Oh yeah, that goes back to that rigid rotor. That goes back to that harmonic oscillator. That goes back to the Boltzmann distribution. And that's what's determining then really all of these, how you spread energy over all these levels that are available to the system. Let's derive the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Right, the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, right? So we know what the partition function is, right? And what we need to do is, this is this degeneracy factor here. We need to figure out a term for that, the number of levels at uh, per unit energy is what we're after here. We're gonna have to get to that. And we're gonna do that for this, what we call the particle in a box problem, all right? And for the particle in a box, uh, that's in appendix, we can determine the number of levels with an energy less than this energy epsilon, right? The number of levels this is with an energy less than energy epsilon is related to a bunch of constants, right? Planck constant, the mass of the molecule, the mass of the particle, and the size of the box, A squared. Uh, A is the length of the box, right? So let's differentiate this with respect to energy, all right? Uh, and what, we'll what we can define then is this 
density of states. The density of states is how many states there are per unit energy. Ah, that's just exactly what we need to stuff in back here. And for translational energy, which is the one we're looking at, we know that we've got a continuous distribution. So once we have developed this term for translational energy that we put in there, we can replace the summation with an integration. We're going to integrate from all energy zero to infinity and then obtain an expression for the translational partition function. This would be for any gas phase molecule, it turns out, right? The partition function, the translational partition function for a monotonic gas, this is the total um, uh, uh, partition function because there only is um, translation in that case. You'll see the partition function is related to the volume, right? The mass and the temperature. Boltzmann constant, Planck's constant, Pi, those are all just constants. Two is obviously a constant, right? Okay, and here's, here's how these change as a function of time. The translational partition function is the only one we're gonna find out that depends on the volume. It depends on the size of the container, in other words. Oh yeah, right, we mentioned that before, why it's a continuous distribution. And the this term over here, right, this, uh, h bar squared two pi m kvt to one half that we call that the thermal wavelength that term right uh, if we cube it it has to have units of inverse volume um, if we have the, the non cube version oh it's it's in length right look at that length the thermal wavelength to me 10 to minus 14 meters yeah this is why it's uh, this is related to why translation has gone um, has gone uh, continuous on us, this thermal wavelength, the, the box has to be really small to get quantum behavior. Use, calling that the thermal wavelength, um, we get a really simple expression for the translational partition function. Be careful of your units when you SI units for this. This is, remember, when we got small m, that's the mass of a molecule. Kb, that's usually with a molecule, right? Whereas m, the molar mass that goes with are the gas constant. So this is the mass of an individual molecule and the SI units of mass, kilograms, right? Kilograms there, we want kilograms per molecule is what we're gonna put in here to get the right units for the thermal wavelength. Okay, well, now that we have the translational partition function, we can actually derive the Maxwell-Boltzmann speed distribution that if we know how the uh, energy levels are partitioned with energy, then we can substitute back in for that uh, e to the alpha term and determine then how the number of molecules between speed v and v plus delta v, how that relates. Oh yes, that's the same distribution that I showed you earlier. The Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution describes the translational energy of a molecule, and we saw how that depends on temperature for one given molecule, right? It gets broader and the maximum moves out in velocity for a given molecule as you increase the temperature. Or if you stay at one temperature and change the mass from very heavy to very light, again, you get broader distributions uh, and the maximum moves out as you go to lighter molecules. Lighter molecules are faster. They all have the same energy, right? At the same temperature, but the velocity is different because kinetic energy equals one half mv squared.